Welcome to this Autolab video. I'm Alistair Cook and today we're going to look at setting up VMware Workstation for Autolab. This is the environment that I developed Autolab with so it is the simplest one to set up. What we need to start is a nice fresh machine. Here I've got a Windows 7 machine. It has 8 gigabytes of RAM installed and is running the 64-bit version of Windows 7. 8 gigabytes of RAM is the minimum to get a functioning Autolab operational and you must have a 64-bit operating system installed. We're running with VMware Workstation today, so we'll just fire that up. This is an absolutely new install of VMware Workstation, just Workstation deployed, and I'm going to keep working with my eval license. Two things we need to do to configure VMware Workstation. The first one is to tell Workstation to actually use as much RAM as possible. The second is to set up the networking. RAM is configured in the preferences and under memory. The default configuration only allows us to use three quarters of the installed RAM on the physical server. Now this would be fine if we had 16 or 32 gigabytes of RAM, but this particular computer only has eight gigabytes of RAM, which is the minimum to successfully run Autolab. This requires that then we then change to using seven gigabytes of RAM for virtual machines. And I always choose to fit all of the virtual machines in the reserved RAM because this gives me the best performance of my virtual machines. If we allow the virtual machines to be swapped under Autolab, it's really painful because we're concurrently using multiple virtual machines. Swapping RAM is not so much of a concern where you're only accessing one virtual machine at a time, but with Autolab, we run all of them at once. To run more virtual machines, you could choose to, to swap some of those virtual machines, but you'd need to be very patient. That's the RAM configuration, nice and easy. The other configuration is networking. The default network configuration doesn't include the VMNet3 network that I use in Autolab, and all of the virtual machines are configured to use, so we'll just add that network. The default subnet that's used is also not the subnet that I like. We use the 199 subnet. And we also turn off DHCP because the domain controller virtual machine is going to provide DHCP. Now that we've got VMware Workstation configured, we need to extract out the archive of the Autolab. I like to create a folder called VMs directly in the root of my C drive, and this is where I extract the Autolab archive to. I need to share, connect to the share where my Autolab archive resides. I have a file server where I keep this, but you may keep it on, a, uh, on the same disk or on a, on a USB disk. I extract the Autolab zip file directly into that VMs folder. The zip file contains the uh, lamb underscore local folder within it and consequently I get the right folder structure in the extracted directory. Inside that lab local folder I have all of the folders for the virtual machines that make up the lab. The other thing I need in that lab local folder is the Windows Server 2008 R2 install ISO. I copy that in alongside the lab local folder. When that copy completes, I'm ready to power on the NAS virtual machine and start the build process, including populating the build share. I'll put up a video very shortly about populating the build share, making sure you put the right things in the right places. Once the ISO is copied across, we can open, open up the lab local folder, find ourselves the NAS virtual machine, and just double click on the VMX file that has the boxes icon. Workstation will then allow us to power on our NAS virtual machine. You can see that it is correctly connected to the right network and it's ready to power on. We'll have a look at populating the build share in a following video. This has been the Autolab setup for VMware Workstation and I'm Alistair Cook. Stay tuned to labguides.com for more videos about Autolab configuration and setup.